Hi, I'm Shereen Kassam and I am a TEDx speaker. I gave my first TEDx talk in January of 2022. You can check it out right here. Highly encourage you to check it out before you watch the rest of this video so you know whether you like my style and what I did so you know whether you want to take advice from me or not. So today I'm going to walk you through the application process. How do you apply for a TEDx talk? So if you watched my first video, if you're here for my intro video, welcome back. If you're not, I'm going to repeat some things. So when you are applying for a TEDx talk, there's obviously there's different ways that you can go about the application process, right? One, you can either find the TEDx event that you want to apply for, read the application and tailor your idea worth spreading to that application, or you can work on an idea worth spreading. And then when you feel like you're ready, find a TEDx talk to apply to either way is fine. What I did is I found the TEDx talk that I wanted to apply to. Actually, it found me. I was on Facebook. I saw that a certain TEDx event was taking applications. A friend had shared a post and I decided, huh, okay, TEDx, I'm going to apply. And I went to their application and I printed it out and I got cracking. I did not know what my idea worth spreading was. The application took me three weeks and it was grueling. I mean, I got on the phone with friends. I got on the phone with a stranger that I didn't even know because I wanted someone else to hear my story and tell me what parts of it were interesting and what parts of it weren't. And then really try to extrapolate. What is it that is my idea worth spreading? I'm going to say your idea worth spreading is an idea, but it's also you. It's also a personal story. You want to be able to tie in who you are. So you want to be authentic. You want to be genuine. You want to be personable in your application process. Okay. Now, a lot of times when you look at applications, they say the same thing. So I'm going to read to you what I saw on many applications as I was doing some research for this video. Okay. So you want to find an idea worth spreading. Now this is what it says on the application. We are looking for speakers with ideas worth sharing speakers who authentically connect with our audience. Speakers who must be able to convey one big idea or new information with passion and authority. That is huge. One big idea. You get eight to 18 minutes. This is not the time to write a keynote speech. This is not the time to tell someone everything you know. This is not the time to make a PhD statement. You have one idea. So like, say you have two or three ideas, you need to narrow it down because you don't want to also, you don't want to bog down the audience, right? You don't want to confuse them. We have a very short attention span these days. If you haven't been able to tell if you're on social media a lot, you know, between Facebook reels, Instagram reels, TikTok videos, 15 to 30 seconds is what most people can pay attention to. So the last thing people can do is listen to you for 18 minutes and then try to stick with you. If you're giving them more than one idea, you want to have passion. Because passion comes across not only in your voice and in your gestures and in your, your presence on stage, but you need to have passion because you are going to eat, live and breathe this talk for the next six months of your life. And let me tell you something, even after I gave my talk, I was waking up in the middle of the night with the lines running through my head and I was like, stop it. Stop it. I don't want you to go through my head anymore, but I was passionate, so passionate about it that the talk was ingrained in me so deeply. Okay. We're looking for speakers doing amazing work or who know something few do, but all want to amazing work. Okay. Now that doesn't mean you have to be a celebrity or you have to be an influencer or you have to be super great at your job or a household name. That is Ted talks. We are solely talking about Ted X today. And if you need to know the difference, go to my first video. I give you an overview of the difference between Ted and Ted X today. We're talking about Ted X. Anyone can be a Ted X speaker. And when they say you need to be someone doing amazing work, you're all doing amazing work in your own field to your own knowledge in your Ted X application. There is a place where they are going to ask you, why are you the right person to give this talk? That is your time to brag about yourself. That is your time to give them your bio, but also tell them who you are at your core and why you are the only person who can give this talk. And all of you, if you pick a topic, all of you should be able to do that. Okay. You should have something truly important or unique to share, or you should challenge your audience to think about something in a new way. Speakers should be able to communicate their big idea in eight to 18 minutes. Now they give you up to 18 minutes. You don't have to use all 18 minutes. And I highly suggest you don't, I highly suggest you stay between eight minutes and 12 minutes. And I say that for two things. One, because we have a short attention span 
And two, you have to memorize this talk. Yeah, you heard me, memorize this talk. And I don't know about you, but 18 minutes of memorization is hard. I only memorized, my talk was between 11 and 12 minutes, and it took me four weeks to memorize it. And even at four weeks, I was still making mistakes to the point where I just, I cut out sentences and paragraphs that I couldn't remember. I trimmed up my talk with less than three weeks to go. I trimmed my talk by two minutes to 10 minutes because I couldn't remember certain parts of it. Always keep in mind your big idea. The primary goal of your talk is to communicate your idea effectively. Successful TEDx talks teach, entertain, make us think, make us laugh, cry, or inspire action all through the sharing of the idea. Tell us why your idea is original, authentic, and why we should be interested. Now, if your talk is coming from the heart, if you are passionate about your talk, in your application, if you're authentic, personable, and genuine, you have a great talk. But it still goes back to what is your big idea? These are also on the application. They are not motiva TEDx talks are not motivational talks. You have to have a unique idea. Stay away from religion and politics. Focus on a single idea. This is not a time to sell your book, consulting firm, or workshop. Do not promote anything or make medical claims. So very important to keep that in mind. Okay. Now here is what I suggest. Okay. So now you let's pretend, let's pretend you're going through the route of, you know, which TEDx you want to apply to and you've printed out the application. First, be aware that TEDx talks are very competitive. They usually take 12 to 14 speakers for each event. 12 get picked and then two are on standby in case one of those 12 can't make it. Then they swapped on those other two. So it is a very competitive process. So if you don't get in, that's okay. Most people I've talked to have applied more than once, right? I met a guy who applied 143 times. Okay. Now, if you get to 143 times and you've been applying with the same big idea, probably time to stop and think about your big idea. Maybe ask for feedback. Here is how I came up with my big idea. So I, I had the application in front of me already. I kind of did this backward. I didn't have a big idea, but I, I had an application with a deadline and I work really well with deadlines and that pressure. I went to my network and I said, who do I know that's done a TEDx talk? And a friend of mine said, I know someone. And she put me in touch with a woman that I didn't know. Now, what I did before that conversation, I had 30 minutes with this woman. What I did was I wrote down my war stories. What are five stories that are war stories that I always remember that, that really make me sit and ponder why that, why did that happen to me? And what did I learn from that war story? What was my learning? Because you see all these memes, like God doesn't throw you things you can't handle or everything God throws you is to make you stronger. And if you don't believe in God, then the universe, there's all these memes on Instagram that talk about this stuff. Right? And so I wrote down these war stories. What are stories? that are my war stories. What are stories that I talk to my therapist about? Like, why did this happen? What, what was I supposed to learn from it? What are stories that I tell my friends? What are stories that I tell in interviews? What are stories that I wrote in my college applications? Cause think of a TEDx talk, like a college application, right? Competitive, putting in this time and effort and really thinking deep. You have to go really deep with your Ted talk if you want to be memorable and if you want to have a great idea. Cause again, with the deeper you go, the more authentic you're going to be, the more genuine you're going to be and the more personable you're going to be. Okay. And you want to have an aspect of storytelling to your Ted talk, TEDx talk. You don't want to just be up on stage giving up facts, right? You want to have a story to tell. You want the audience to be engaged with you. So the first thing I did was I wrote down these war stories. Then I went and watched a bunch of TEDx talks. I had never really sat down and watched TEDx talks. Like I've seen them, like when they pop up on my Facebook or when I'm on YouTube or when somebody sends them to me, I watched them. But this time I took an effort and I went and I, to YouTube and I watched TEDx talks. And then I started searching for topics that were interesting to me. So something you should know about me, I'm a stand up comedian. I'm on the radio. I have a podcast. I have a corporate job. I have an e-commerce business. I do a lot of things. So what I started to do was I started searching 
TEDx corporate, TEDx humor, TEDx stand up comedy, or TEDx podcast. And I started to see what people in my niche or people like me were talking about. What were their talks about? And I started taking notes, right? Started taking notes about what was their big idea. Could I, could I pinpoint what their big idea was? How did I like their speaking style? Did they use slides? So some TEDx events let you use slides while you're talking. Not all of them, but some of them do. Did the slides help or did they not help? How did I like their sense of humor? Did they even have a sense of humor? Did it help them or did it hurt them? How long was their talk? I even started paying attention to what they were wearing. So I started taking notes, like what talks really resonated with me and why did they resonate with me, right? And I wrote those down and it's super important to write down the talks that resonated with you. And I will tell you why in a second. So now I've compiled all this data and I get on the call with this woman and the woman goes, so what's your big idea? And I said to her, I don't know, but here are some of the ideas I'm playing with. And what was really interesting about her is I am a, if you can't tell, I am a brown Asian woman and this woman was a white Caucasian woman. Now our experience in life have been very different. And so it was also great to get her opinion on some of the topics I wanted to talk about because she could tell me whether it was too far off the, you know, the spectrum, would people get it, would people not get it? Would it be intriguing to someone who hasn't been in my footsteps, in my shoes, to understand what I'm coming at? And so that conversation was a really great conversation. So I highly suggest finding someone. So ask your network if you know, if they know anyone who's done a TEDx talk or someone who's willing to be that sounding board for you. So she helped me kind of narrow it down. We narrowed it down to three different things that I could talk about. And then she was like, go and write the application for all these three things, which was a lot of work, okay? But once you start writing the application, that's when you really get to dissect it, right? Can you really write an 18 minute speech or 18 minute talk on this? Again, we're not doing an 18 minute talk, but you want to know if you could, do you have enough material or passion around this topic for 18 minutes? Now I wanna take a step back and I mentioned this in the earlier video, but there's different types of applications. There is a written application and there is a video application. I did a written application. There are video applications too, and let me tell you what a video application says. The video application says, we require a 60 to 90 second application video. This is your application. Think of this as your sales pitch for a big idea. It should be an original video of you speaking on your topic. Identify your big idea and give three supporting statements. We want to see that you're confident in your idea and we want to get a sense of how you will present. Okay. So now if you don't have presenting abilities or speaking abilities, or you're not a confident speaker, this may not be the route to go a video application. You may want to stick with a speaking application, but I will caveat that if you do a speak a written application and you're not a good speaker and you get accepted, you have six months to become a good speaker. So let yourself be honest with yourself. Is six months enough to get you into a comfortable place to be a good speaker and a strong speaker? Because this is gonna be one of the most important talks of your life and I say that because it's going to be on the internet forever, okay? So you wanna make sure that it is a good talk. This is also how you're going to be known because whenever people Google you, this video will show up. So also make sure you apply with something that you hold dear to your heart that you want to be known for and that you are passionate about. Okay. Um, I also want to take a step back because I didn't mention this. If you're looking for events to apply to, you can go to ted.com forward slash TEDx forward slash events. And then you can filter by countries and by states and by cities to find where you want to apply to. You can also go on Google and search call for TEDx speakers and then put the year and then you'll find like a lot of websites that will come up with what when the applications are due. Remember that most application processes close about six months before the event. Um, and something else you should know with applications, some places have a theme. So like the one I applied to, collected all the applications, picked all the speakers, and then tried to create the theme around the speakers they picked, right? Because they didn't want to try, they didn't want to get rid of good speakers just because they didn't fall under the theme. But some applications say the theme of this year is home or the theme of this year is healthcare or the theme of this year is friendship. And then your talk needs to tie into that. Now, here's the thing. If you're going to apply to three or four different events and they all have a different theme, I do not want you to write a different idea worth spreading for each application. Think of it as a college application. College applications all ask you the same college essay, right? They all want to know the same thing. Tell me about yourself. 
or why do you want to come to this college? And you write it once and then you tweak it for each college application. That is what you're going to do with this TEDx talk. Your idea worth spreading should be so solidified that you should not change it for each application, okay? Because then you're just shooting darts at the wall because you didn't invest enough time. Okay, so let's go back. So I worked with this woman, we bounced ideas, and then I had three applications. Um, then I got on the phone with friends, people who knew me, and I said, which story resonates with me most? Which story do you see me telling that people would say, that's her story. That screams what she should be known for. That screams what she could write a book about. That screams what she could do a keynote about. That screams what she could have a TV show about, right? You wanna think big. You wanna think that this TEDx talk is going to blow up, it is going to go viral, and who is gonna come at your door to write a book or a movie deal or a TV deal or whatever it is you wanna do with this TEDx talk? Are you the person to do this talk? or can someone do it better than you? And if you think someone can do it better than you, then you need to find a different idea, okay? So, I wrote these applications and then I started sending these applications to people. Again, some people I knew and some people I didn't know. Um, I found another person who had done a TEDx event, so I started pestering her. Let me tell you something, people like to help, right? Some people can't, don't help right away because they don't have time or they're not organized. Some people don't help because they wanna make money and get paid for their help. But there are genuinely people in the world who want to help you. Find those people. When I did this TEDx, I'm not, I'm not a big person on asking for help. I'm really not because I hate being turned down or being, I hate when people are like, well that's gonna cost you $3,000 and then I hate to say, no that's crazy, I'm not paying you even though I know you and you're my friend. For this TEDx talk, I reached out to people that I didn't even think were gonna answer the phone for me. And these people answered the phone for me. These people gave me a stage to go practice on. They gave me a venue to come in and practice on. They gave me an audience to practice on. So this is the time when you stop being shy and you start asking for help because this is a huge endeavor, okay? The next six months of your life, if you get in, are a huge endeavor. So you need to leave your ego at the door and you need to start sharing your story. And if you're shy or embarrassed to share your story, then you're gonna have to pick a different story because you're about to share the story with the world, okay? So be confident in who you are and what you wanna share. Now, I had these three applications, kept sending them to people, people kept saying yes, no, yes, no. Finally, I came to the one that I wanted to do. And what was funny is that the one I ended up submitting was the one in my gut that I kept saying, this is my talk, but I thought that it was too far out there, so I needed people to gut check it for me. But that is the talk I went through. Now let me, I'm gonna walk you through my application process, okay? So, they give you an application, they ask you what is your proposed title, so I gave them my proposed title, which is actually the title that ended, they ended up using. Now for some people, they're gonna tweak your title or work with you on a new title. My title was How Chicken Wings Made Me Unstoppable, and if you watch my video, you will see that is the idea, that is the title that they went with. Then they ask you to pick a category. This one was kind of a weird one because I wasn't even sure what category I was in, so I picked two categories. And so like the categories are like food, adventure, agriculture, exploration, I think there was like media, I don't remember all the categories. That's not super important. They just wanna make sure that they have a good mix of talks. Then you have to give a basic description of your big idea. Basically they wanna know, can you give me your big idea in one sentence? Then they want a detailed description now, they, this is not where you write your whole talk. My detailed descriptions were, was three paragraphs, okay? The first paragraph was talking about me. It was the storytelling aspect. It was the personable. It was the getting to know me, getting to know why you should pick me for this talk. That's not, this is not the part for your bio, but this is kind of like getting them to get an idea of who you are, like they falling in love with you. Think about, think about this application as a first date, right? When you go on a date with someone, and for some of you it's been a while, but if you've gone on a date with someone, you're you're trying to you're you're trying to tell them who you are, right? So you start off with like, this is what I do, and like get to you try to make them laugh and you try to make them like you, right? That's what you're doing in the first paragraph. Then in the second paragraph, you're trying to sell them on why is this a great idea? Like why should they date you, right? What are you gonna bring to the table, right? And then the third paragraph is, is if you date me, here's what you're gonna get. So this is like, this is what is the audience going to get from listening to my TED Talk? What is the audience gonna get from my big idea? So you're really having three different paragraphs. First paragraph, 
Who are you and why do I want you to be a TEDx speaker in my event, right? Why, why should I pick you? Show them your personality. Second paragraph, what are they gonna get from this TEDx event? What are they gonna get from your talk? What are they gonna leave with? How are they gonna feel? And then lastly, what advice are you gonna give them to improve their life, to make their life better, right? Now that is not the framework you have to use. That is the framework I use and that's kind of how my talk went. And if you watch it, you'll see. I started with a personal story. I got you involved in who I am as a person and in my story and my life. Then I told you my big idea. I told you what I came to share with you. And then I gave you actionable steps to take home. And that was basically my detailed description in three short paragraphs. Then the next question is, is why are you the one person who can give this talk? Now, this is a two part question really. This is where they wanna hear your bio and do not be humble. I was humble in my first draft and this woman was like, what are you doing? You are such an accomplished woman. Tell them who you are. So it's really important. This is where you wanna name drop. This is where you wanna talk about your awards. This is about when you wanna tell them, why are you such a great person to do a TEDx talk? And try to drop in there your speaking experiences. Do you have experience speaking? Don't be like super overt, like I present at work all the time. Try to wrap it into the story. And then you also wanna talk about your personal story. So remember I talked to you about those war stories? You wanna maybe give a war story. You wanna kinda of give a little tidbit of that war story that led you to this big idea. Why, what, what aha moment did you have in your life? What moment did you have in your life where you said, I just became a better person or I just learned from this or I just discovered this about myself? Tell them that, be vulnerable. Super important in this application, be vulnerable, genuine, authentic. I gave them this in three paragraphs. So the first paragraph was kind of like how I was feeling during the war story. Like when my war event happened, um, and if you've listened to my TED, TEDx event, when my war event happened, I was in my mid twenties. I was depressed. I was miserable. I was leaning very heavily on alcohol. Um, I felt invisible and useless. And you can hear all that in my TEDx talk. Then my second paragraph was how I resourced myself. Now I, I use that term in here just like I did in my talk. And I talk about the process of resourcing myself, discovering stand-up comedy. Again, all in my talk. And then my last paragraph is all about who I am and what I bring to the table. Basically my bio, really just bragging about myself as much as I can. Then the next question is what life or career experience informs your talk? Again, be vulnerable, talk about your war story, talk about how that may impacted you um, in your life and in your career. This one was only four, this was like two sentences for me basically. I didn't, I didn't write a lot about this because I felt like I had already told my story in the description at that point that I was just gonna repeat myself. Um, then they want to know who is your favorite TED or TEDx talk. Again, I don't know how long this needs to be. I made it, I picked one TEDx talk, actually I picked a TED talk and then I wrote a pretty lengthy paragraph on why it resonated with me, but I used that paragraph to talk about me. How did it resonate with me? So I used it to give them more information about myself, more information that I didn't tell them in any other part of my application, right? So this was another part to share with them something else new about me that they maybe didn't know to help them sway their decision on why they should pick me. Now it asks you, what is your favorite TEDx Eustis talk? So I did TEDx Eustis. So now they just want to make sure that you have watched TEDx. They want to make sure you've gone and done your research and you've watched their videos. I didn't write a long paragraph about this one. Then they asked me, can you work in a team? This is super important. They want to know if you can work in a team because when you get selected to be a TEDx speaker, they're going to give you a coach. Now this coach is gonna be a past TEDx speaker or organizer or someone who's volunteering their time. And they're there to answer your questions, make sure you stay on task with the deadlines, um, help you with your drafts and your outlines. And they wanna make sure that you're going to have an open relationship with them, that you're good at taking feedback, that you're good at taking constructive feedback, that you can work with timelines and deadlines and that you can work with people and that you're not gonna be like, no, I like to work by myself and I don't need anyone else's opinion because I know everything and this is my talk and I'm the expert. You will get disqualified so fast. Okay, so this is where you say, yes, I work well with people and you give them an example. It's very important to give an example of when you worked well with people. 
And then it says, when working in a team, what role do you gravitate to? This one was a tricky question. You kind of want to say that you're a leader, but you also want to say that you're really great working in a team and that you're always willing to step back and listen to people's ideas because they want to make sure that you have gum, that you have ambition and motivation to meet the deadlines and get to the finish line and put in the effort that you need to get it done, but that you're also willing to take their advice and slow down and incorporate their advice and feedback into what you're talking about. So it's a very fine line that you want to balance. And again, you want to tell a story, you want to give an example. So that is my application. And, and lastly, don't procrastinate on the application, right? Because the internet could go down, something could go wrong with the website. It's like applying to anything else. If you mess up, if you miss the deadline, that's on you. And that's, that's, that's basically it. Press submit and then after you press submit, I would do a couple things. I would go find the, the TEDx event that you are applying to. If you don't already, find them on social media. So whether it's Twitter, Instagram, Facebook and follow them so you can keep up with up to date on any alerts that they put out. Now here's the thing when they, if they tell you no, okay, ask for feedback. Again, it doesn't hurt. Just ask for feedback. So you know, as you continue applying to other TEDx events, do you need to tweak your big idea? So good luck with your application. If you have any questions or concerns or comments, put them down below and I will get back to them again. Take a look at my TEDx talk. Let me know what you think. And I will be posting part three of this video shortly, which is going to be what to do when you get accepted. Talk to you soon and good luck with the application process.